Leo. Thanks for coming. Thank you very, very much. Well, I guess the big stories in Washington this week. Huh? Uh, President Clinton signed the crime bill on the White House lawn today, telling a huge crowd it was a courageous day, not signing the crime bill, for them to be standing on the White House lawn. Incoming! I guess you all... You know. I guess you know all about that story. Isn't that unbelievable? The other night, an airplane crashed into the White House at 2 o'clock in the morning. They said it's the first time in a long time someone's tried to get into the White House at 2 o'clock in the morning that wasn't President Clinton. You know, so... It... <laughs> You know the story on this? The Secret Service says Bill Clinton was safe because he wasn't at the White House. He was staying at the Blair House across the street. You know, this is the first time sleeping in the wrong bed has actually gotten him out of trouble. So that was... <laughs> You know, everybody's worried about security. That's the big thing at the White House now. Now they're saying, oh, the Secret Service, you know, they didn't get any warning. They didn't know. They did have a warning. They did have a warning. Apparently, seconds before the plane landed on the White House lawn, a Stephanopoulos was seen running across going, the plane, boss, the plane! <laughs> right there, he knew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like those old references. Oh, yes. yeah. The plane. It's just fun to say, the plane. The plane. Can you say it, Bradford, that way? The plane. Yes, boss. No, not like that. <laughs> That's how he talks. Hey, look, boss, the plane. That's no, the way he He didn't say it that way. How do he say it? Look, boss, the plane. He had that stupid lisp, you know? Look, boss. <laughs> Probably the way he shot himself. Please send <laughs> all lisp letters to Frankfurt. Yeah! See, anytime you say anything, you get mail. Hey, I used to have a lisp, okay? I can speak. You, didn't you have a lisp? I did. And you so you whoever take wants to send to me a letter, to kiss it. my butt. <laughs> <laughs> Tape a penny. No, actually, what I did was Dear I... Dear Mr. Marcellus, I am a butt kisser, and I am... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, forget it. Actually, actually, you know what's funny about the night the Cessna crashed in the White House? Now, this is really interesting. Apparently, Marion Barry was in a deserted field about a block away, the flashlight going, where's the plane? Where's the plane? <laughs> I get letters. Dear Miss Leno, I am a crack user and I was offended. <laughs> That's right. And President Clinton's approval... <laughs> yeah. President Clinton's approval rate at an all-time low this week. Now, not too good. Something was it, 39%, something like that. You know, analysts are always pointing out how other presidents before Clinton, you know, had similar negative ratings at this stage in their terms. And that is true. Most did. But Reagan, remember, two years in, way, way down. But I gotta admit, I can't remember Carter, Reagan, or even Bush ever having to worry about kamikaze attacks. <laughs> it's a little odd to be. See what else happened today. Here in California. <laughs> Our own governor, Governor Pete Wilson, signed a bill yesterday banning weightlifting in jail. They feel this is making criminals, you know, too strong and powerful. No more weightlifting in jail. But he said inmates will be allowed to choose an alternative sport. So far, the most popular. Pole vaulting. I don't know why. Pole vaulting. Yeah. <laughs> what crime news this week? I guess a busload of tourists on the way to Las Vegas yesterday was held up, and the robbers stole twenty thousand dollars from the passengers. So, really, they came out ahead when you think about it. You know, just take it. You know, cut your just turn around, and go right back. Now, this is the odd story. Now, you've probably seen this on the hard copy first edition deals. You heard about this porno actress that's supposed to testify in the O.J. Simpson case. <laughs> now, they are questioning, they are questioning her character and her credibility. <laughs> they are questioning the character and the credibility of a porno actress. When will this witch hunt end? You know, <laughs> I'm just, you know, uh, We got porno actresses testifying. Is anybody not going to watch this trial? There's some for everybody here. Is there nobody ugly in this trial? Everybody is handsome. Porno actress. 
<laughs> oh, tater tots again. I mentioned this. Bradford, did you did you check out tater tots last night? You had no idea. Have you I checked them out? No, I still don't know what they I'll are. I'll take you out for some tots tonight. We'll go. You know. That's all right, Jay. I'm a vegetarian. We'll do some tater tots. <laughs> huh? so that's okay. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, no, that's, that's good. That's, that's white people food. Tater tots. Oh. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. A specialty. Oh, boy. Uh, a little Wonder Bread with some tater tots on the yeah. side. Yeah. Boy, yeah. What are you going to eat? Yes, mm -hmm. Bob. The food of my people. It's the Reebok. <laughs> anyway, they're celebrating their 40th birthday this week, Tater Tots. So if you've been eating them over the years, you, you probably won't be celebrating yours. Yeah, you probably won't. Yeah. Hey, here you go. L.A. Rams football team. Do you know this? They have come out with their own line of cologne. I'm not making this up. It's L.A. Rams cologne. This is true. A little bit different. A little bit different. You wear it, and the other guy scores. Hey, but you know... Do you want to go to the movies with me tonight? Yeah, what are we going to see? We're going to see, uh, we have a screening at like uh, one in the morning or something. Quiz show. The Robert One Richard in the movie. morning? It's a great movie. One in the morning? Yeah, we are jazz musicians. You know, I'm a jazz thing. musician with a child. That's all right. <laughs> one in the morning? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, I'll take you. We'll, I'll wake Reese up. Yeah, no problem. We'll, 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 take, we'll take him. He can see it. He can see Let's it. Take okay. some bourbon. Not... Yeah, cool. Anyway, you know about this? It's, it's about the quiz show scandal of the 50s, which many consider to be the darkest days in the history of television. Well, second darkest, if you count that first season of Love Boat. That would really be it. Other than that, other than that it's pretty, pretty dark. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good TV gossip. Here you go. French Canadian actress Genevieve Bougeot. I think that's how you say her name. Do you know about this woman? How do you say it? Bougeot. Yeah, yeah Bougeot. She was going to be the first female Star Trek captain ever. You know, the new Star Trek, the third installment, they were going to have a female captain, but she quit after three days. I guess you didn't like the idea that as a woman Star Trek captain, she'd only be making 63 cents for every Federation dollar Kirk made, you know, so uh, totally, yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> and now she, she's suing Spock for sexual harassment. I guess he tried to give him one of those Vulcan mind melds there. And Everybody's still talking about Dennis Franz winning that Emmy for Best Actor in NYPD Blue. I'm glad he won. I like him. He's a nice man. Nice man. And you know, he's not. He's not. He doesn't look like a superstar actor guy. You know, he's your normal NYPD Blue actor who takes his pants off one leg at a time like all the other NYPD Blue actors. You know, he takes them off. Oh, man. All right, we move on. Move on. Well, these are, a lot of these, again, are comments. They're social comments, not necessarily jokes. That's right. Well, I'll tell you which ones at the end. Now, Forbes, Forbes magazine came out with this list of the 40th uh, richest people in Hollywood. You know who number three was? Anybody know? You? No, not me. <laughs> Barney the Dinosaur. Third, third highest paid entertainer in the world. You know what he made? You know what Barney made? $84 million. That is correct. Huh? Now, yeah, but uh, now you see, that seems like a lot of money. But when you think about it, he's not an overnight success. I mean, it took him, what, 200 million years to get where he is. So you average that out. Yeah! You average it out. Yeah! Hey, Brian, but does your son Reese like this Barney guy? Absolutely not. No, he doesn't? He's not a Barney? Hell no. No, can't no. stand him? No. no, thank God. No, no, no. You know who the richest guy in Hollywood is last year? No, not me. We are still saying me. No, Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, listen to this, made 335 million bucks because of Jurassic Park. And now they're talking about doing it. Really wants to hit the big dough. Really wants to get rich for the Jurassic Park sequel. Kill off Barney. That's where the big Here's a subject people can't get enough of, more gossip. In a recent interview in the uh, magazine London Daily Mera, Michael Jackson says he and his wife, Lisa Marie, made love twice before he asked her to marry him. That's what he said, they made love twice. Kind of hard to picture, isn't it? Huh? Now, I know with my wife and I, it's hard enough trying to make love when the cat's watching. You ever do that, huh? huh? And the cat is looking at it. Can you imagine what it's like when you got a llama, a monkey, and a gorilla? <laughs> And 
And on Fox's Models, Inc. How many people watch this program? You watch this Models, Inc.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen to this. <laughs> this month, an actress who fell off a building and died in the season premiere in June is returning to the show. An actor who was on the show in June that fell off a building and died is back on the program now. This year. See, apparently, as it turns out, see, when she fell off, she was just brain dead, so now she can come back, fit right in, no problem. <laughs> We have a fine, fine program tonight. The star of the John Larroquette show. I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you who it is. But... Yeah. Anyway, a fine, fine winner of what? What's we talking about, Emmys? Four, won four in a row. Four. Only man in the history uh, of the world. Not since the early Roman times has anyone done this. Four in a row, Mr. John Larroquette. Yeah. And a woman who has her own talk show just started yesterday, got pretty good reviews, and Phi Master, she is worth all kinds of dough, huh? You know, she plays dumb, she is very smart. She's got like tons of dough with those Phi thingies there. Huh? It's like a million bucks every time she does this or something. But anyway, very nice woman, Suzanne Summers. Suzanne Summers. Now, listen to this. Now, see, this is our last week in this studio before we move over. We go to Vegas next week, and then we go to our new studio. And we were going to destroy this studio and blow it up. Yeah. And, 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 the, uh, and the fire department said, no, you can't blow it up. But we had booked this lady already, Alison Bly. She's a lady who sits on dynamite or something. What does she do? And blows herself up. This could be a woman for you, Kevin. This is <laughs> Anyway, she's going to blow right, herself right. up. Right here. What do we have to do? We have to clear the, the studio or something? Well, you'll see. Stay tuned. Again, we'll have her on in the end in case there's an accident. So this way you don't kill any of the guests. Allison Bly! Allison Bly! Say hello to Bradford Marcellus in the Tonight Show band! The story. You're about to. Is she used to having known actors throw potatoes at her? I don't know. I guess so. Why'd you tell police? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Here's the crime of the century. Grease taken. Someone stole $200 worth of used cooking grease from the Kentucky Fried Chicken, apparently. Well, I guess if you're in there and you're hungry and you want to take something, this is your best bet, probably. Though. <laughs> This one, I don't even understand. I'm not quite sure what it means. 29-year-old East Orange man was served with contempt warrant from Bloomfield about 2 a.m. after his vehicle was stopped for erratic driving, which the man explained was due to the fact he had been eating Fig Newtons. Well, there you are. <laughs> Your Honor, I was eating Fig Newtons. I think that pretty much says it all. <laughs> Shouldn't have to explain any more than that. Well, that one's too, that one's, this one's so odd, it doesn't even make sense to me. I, I like this headline, it just, it, this, you know, this is the luckiest man. I don't care how lucky you think you are. Look at this guy. Man shot 16 times, not seriously hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is. <laughs> Here you go. You know, police are very good at what they do, but sometimes criminals are just really stupid. Listen to this. Suspected of snatching the purse of a 79-year-old woman, an, unarmed, an unnamed man in Minneapolis was uh, stuck in a police lineup to be ID'd by the victim. When police asked the suspect to turn his ball cap around with the bill towards the front, he declined, saying he would keep it backwards because that's the way I had it on when I took the purse. <laughs> Is another idiot criminal. Someone burglarized the Calvary Methodist Church sometimes between Sunday night and Wednesday morning. Apparently was so intrigued with the copy machine, he made photocopies of his face and left them on the floor. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. Listen to this guy. Fort Worth, Texas. Police arrested Philip G. Rojo in April after they stopped his car at a roadblock. He's not wearing a seatbelt. Police said they began backing away from the car when they spied three silver pipe-like packages on the floor, telling Rojo, get back, we think you might have a bomb. 
Rojo blurted out, that ain't no bomb, man. That's just cocaine. <laughs> A minute. <laughs> uh, here you go. Now, here's one where the police, perhaps, not really doing their job. In fact, uh, maybe you don't believe me. This is Crown Point, Indiana. Authorities have reopened the investigation of the death of a man whose skull was broken by 32 hammer blows, bypassing local police who ruled the man had committed suicide. <laughs> One more? Well, we have two here. Here you go. Here you go. This one, I don't know. First, I want to show you the headline. It says, crack cocaine found after body cavity search. Okay. Took several hours at the Clarksville Memorial Hospital late Friday for officers to extract the container from Raymond Edward Fanny Brown. <laughs> you think he got that nickname before or after? <laughs> I found the All right, all right, one last one. Here you go. Here you go. Here is probably the biggest idiot. I don't even know what this means. Mansfield General Hospital. Police were called early Saturday to the Gessler Avenue Hospital where a butler man was being treated for a gunshot wound to his right index finger. The man said he was playing with a handgun in the shower when the gun went off. <laughs> oh, don't do do. What do you do with a gun in the shower? <laughs> anyway, folks. If you need to get away but you don't have time, folks, you need the Hilton Bounce Back Weekend. Watch this. I'll be right back right after this. You'd be so nice to come home to. When you need to get away but don't think you have the time, bounce back from it all with a weekend at Hilton. Even a few days can feel like a real vacation, especially when you discover how little it costs. You'd be so nice. You'd be paradise to come home to. I can't wait all night to fall asleep. Then try new Nitol Quick Caps with the smooth new shape to dissolve quickly and help you fall asleep safely and quickly. New Nitol Quick Caps, the quick way to get your Z's. Meow, 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 Something fishy's going on with Meow Mix. They added more salmon flavor. No wonder cats are hooked on Meow Mix. It tastes so good. Cats ask for it by name. The music of Seattle is as progressive as the people. Listen to Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, Screaming Trees, Tad, Alice in Chains, or Mudhoney. Catch Candlebox at Rock Candy, or hang at the Crocodile Club. Where else can you get the Seattle sound? Best Buy. They don't sell flannel, but they do sell thousands of CDs for under $10. Like Eric Clapton's new release, From the Cradle, for $9.96. Some places are known for great music. Best Buy is one of them. One of the loneliest feelings in the world is being faced with an unexpected pregnancy. You've no one to turn to, no one Hello. to talk to. Feeling right, Mr. You need help. I'm okay. Well, help is as near as your yellow pages. Just look under abortion alternatives, where you'll find caring, real-life alternatives to abortion. If you're faced with mm -hmm. an unexpected pregnancy, I'd like to talk to there's somebody. help at the other end of the line. Because that's what we do when we're not, uh, that's what we do in commercials. We just bounce up and down. We have a fine show tonight. John Larquette is here, Suzanne Summers, and a woman who will blow herself up, ladies and gentlemen. She's, she sits on a box of dynamite. How many guys wish their wives could do that? Huh? Blow themselves up and down. <laughs> Allison Bly. Allison Bly. Well, just, oh, stop, dear, Mr. Leno. I was never so offended. Anyway, we are building our new studio, folks. We're very excited about this. Progress uh, seems to be moving along well. Uh, let, let's take a look. Can we put on the inside camera there? The camera over there at the studio? There you go. The, now, you can't tell much. The, the, those are the bleachers where the seats are going to go. There's some lights. In. Look, oh, look at, oh, look at that. Somebody wrote, oh, look at that. Five-ish one. Turn on the other camera. Who's the, somebody's putting graffiti on. Who would do that? Oh, look at, oh, there it is. It's, it's, it's five-ish Finkel, ladies and gentlemen. That's, mm -hmm. hey, get away from there. Get away from there. Oh, man. Oh. Boy, who do you think he is, Johnny Depp? All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> did I just read that? Did I just read Johnny Depp? Did he get arrested in New York for 
doing $2,000 worth of damage to a hotel room. What in a hotel room is worth $2,000? Really? You got that plastic ashtray, you got the sink. All right. Anyway, my first guest, a four-time Emmy-winning actor currently starring in his very own sitcom on NBC, modestly called The John Larroquette Show. Second season starts next Tuesday, September 20th. Please welcome John Larroquette. <laughs> Uh, that Forrest Gump look really Thank catching you. on, yeah. <laughs> sort of my, uh, my homage to um, Claude Akins. I, since he's gone now, I always want to remind people that he was a fine actor, so I like to dress like him. A fine actor, and he did those transmission ads. And you know when those little sesame seeds get stuck between your teeth and your gums, they ow! hurt, don't they? I used to like the polygrip, but ow! They don't, <laughs> ow! You think a guy had been shot in the face when he bit into that poppy seed? This is actually a wardrobe. This is not my own clothes. Those are, not, those are from the show? Yes. I, did. I forgot to bring clothes this morning, so after rehearsal, I just grabbed something. It is a You're looking very outfit. dapper also, by the way. I wanted to well, mention thank you. Thank you very that much. You're, you're very well coiffed these days. A little chubby, but very well coiffed. <laughs> Actually lost weight. Actually. Really? Yes, yes, I have. Where? Yes, I have. <laughs> what do you mean where? All over? Oh, that's about 12 pounds. Oh, good. Oh, no, that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. And you've lost weight as well, haven't you? I have. Well, Warren Littlefield, the president of the network last year, told me he wanted the Laura Ketch show to be a little lighter this year. I thought he meant he just wanted me skinnier. So oh, I, I, I went out and lost oh, weight. Oh, I see. Now, how do you lose weight? What do you do? Do you have a special. Uh... Yeah, I stop eating. That's it? Just no, no special? Yeah, exercise and I don't get along, so I just uh, curtail my intake of haagen Extra at 2 o'clock in the morning now, in bed. Now, see, I don't mind the exercise. I thought I would mind it, but I don't. That doesn't bother me so much. Really? Yeah, I don't bother. You work out with weights and I run three miles or something, and that, that's not a problem. You Is that, like, per week? No, that's per day. Ah! Get here at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then a couple hours, and then I'm done. By 10 o'clock, I'm out of here. But then I eat that's what great. I want. That's well, you look, you look, um, you look like maybe you should... Yeah. Maybe you should pump that up to five or six miles a week. <laughs> five or six miles? No, why are you give me a <laughs> no, hard time? No, because I hate running? exercise. No, if you act, that's great. I, I don't like it, it, but now we start doing it, I don't mind it so much. My wife is a runner, and I oh, just I know. don't <laughs> get it. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I, don't, I don't get that at all, exercise stuff. Why? Why do you not like I just don't, I don't see any point to it. I, the idea of just being in a room uh, and having that much sweat and still have your clothes on to me is not uh, my idea of having a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you about your... Hold on a second. I got a okay. joke. I got a got joke for a joke? record. A yeah. joke for you know what the, the height of optimism is? No, please tell me. A trombone player with a beeper. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's... My brother plays trombone. I'll tell him that. Yeah, a little music inside. Joke there. Yeah, little yeah, inside. pretty inside. Now, I saw you in the Emmys. You were up for Best Actor. I was. I'm sorry you didn't win. I'm Thank sorry you. you didn't win. But uh, you certainly uh, won four times before for uh, Supporting Actor. Yes. It's just so In Supporting Other Actors, I guess you're great. It's that... Well, one, it's just tough to get, over. Just to get over that hump, I guess, must be a killer. That supporting other actors, hey, he's great, he's four, but when you're the actor, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. That's really nice of you. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I feel, don't you, Brentford? Yes. Right. Was it tough to sit there? Because it was tough, you know, because in the other years, I've, you know, I've never been there and not taken one of those statues home, and also that category. As, uh, is given at the very beginning of the ceremony, usually for oh, supporting yeah, actors yeah, and right supporting front, actor. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I went backstage, got my little trophy, came back down, and the rest of the evening, you're, you're sitting there very proud and feeling good. But to sit for three hours uh, through that extravaganza, scenario across your head, and, and also John Goodman was nominated, and I just kept telling my wife, please, if they take the card out of the envelope, and the first word they say is, John, don't let me get up. Oh, yeah, you that's know? true. And the winner is John Goodman. <laughs> like Stephen Boyd in that movie, The Oscar. Did you ever see that Oscar, Frankie yes. Faye? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. But it's corner. great. You know, yeah. it was wonderful to be. You know, the thing about the Emmys, and I, this is not a political statement. It's great that the guys that you work with, and the girls that you work with, and the ladies, and the women, and the men. Let me make sure I see all. Cover of all the groups. Yes, and some of the children. And ethnic minorities as well. That they actually sit down, take the time to check off that box. That means they've seen you work. They like what you're doing, and that that is an honor. To, that your peer group. Right takes time to notice your work. Do you think a lot of them just check off the box without looking at the work? Um, uh, I don't, so I would hope that nobody does. I hope they know what they're doing. 
Yeah, I see all the work. Sure. I check oh, yeah, I know I do. I mean, those miniseries, of course. Oh, I yeah, watch I all watch of them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. More with John right after this. Be right back. Yeah. Three years ago, MCI introduced Friends and Family, a way for families to stay closer while paying less for long distance. Now MCI announces another way for families to always be in touch, always know how to reach each other. It's called the Friends and Family Personal Number. It's not an ordinary phone number, it's a people number. It can follow you wherever you go, so anytime a member of your family wants to reach you, they can, at no cost to them. There's nothing like it, and it's free to every single Friends and Family 2 member. One of these engines was filled with Castrol Syntec, a synthetic oil, the rest with conventional oils. They were then drained and started without oil to prove a point. You see, Syntec has a unique molecular structure that bonds to engine parts. Lab tests show it leaves a layer of protection far stronger than conventional oil. And if Syntec protects this well now, imagine if you leave it in. Castrol Syntec protects in ways other oils can't. Coast, the eye opener. This or this or that. I'm interested in a loan. Um, getting a loan at your credit union is a little different than getting one someplace else. Well, you look like you have an honest face. You see, at a credit union, you're more than just a customer. Naturally, I'd like the best rate available. <laughs> you're a member owner with a say in how things run. How does this look, Bill? <laughs> May I call you, Bill? Looking for a loan? See your credit union or call about joining. So that's it? That's it. Your credit union, the way you'd run things if you were in charge. The other day, somebody mentioned that I probably really enjoyed shopping. Oh, yes, I said, it's so relaxing. And next to Paris in the springtime, it's my favorite thing. Then I went home, which in reality is the part I like most about shopping. Basically, I want as much quality, selection, and savings in one place as possible so I can make some intelligent decisions and be home with my kids. As opposed to out in public with them. Shop like you mean it at Miller Hill Mall. I saw your uh, son backstage. Well, he got a very big, nice-looking boy. Overnight, overnight, they just get huge and ask you for large sums of money. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me about you when you were a kid now. What were you like? Were you a... Um, I was, a, I, I was a, just a regular kind of... Rebellious? Young, uh, no, not, not, not that early on. Not, mm -hmm. not when I was a teenager. I was still very Catholic and very... Uh, Promiscuous? Conserved. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what they say, sexually active? Is that what they say now? No, not not at, in any form whatsoever. Oh, really? No, not I, in any form. Not in any form whatsoever. <laughs> not with any forms whatsoever. Really, really. No, I was very devout. I was uh, the priesthood was really the first thing that I that I thought about being as a profession. So until I was around sixteen or seventeen, that's really what I was thinking about. Oh, you think of going into the priesthood? Uh, very seriously. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, and um, at uh, some point, um, uh, that changed. I discovered certain parts of my body that I had not known about before um, and uh, it just didn't seem like I, I could uh, actually the real reason is that you have to be a student to be a priest I didn't know that I thought you just said I want to be a priest and they gave you, right. you know, some beads right. and a robe and you went out and you were a priest <laughs> but you actually had to like go to college to be a priest Ooh. and that, that did not set well with me were you not a good student no I was not a very good student at all in certain areas that I that I cared about I was good for, but most of it I was rather what were you good at what did you like about school what area was uh, it? English and uh, anything to do with speaking and things like that when I came to mathematics or studying well, that's the same as history. me I just didn't that part of the brain just didn't work very are you well left-handed no I'm right-handed but my son is left-handed oh so. okay now how was he in school is he a good student <laughs> yes Oh, he is? He is a good student? Yes, he is. No, he actually is. When he wants to be, he's a great student. Now, how about, is he like you when he was his age? Is he more sexually I think he's active? Pretty, I <laughs> well, that's I, a hard I question would, for a kid. Does he have girlfriends? You go, gee, what's going on? Do you, uh, have yeah. you had to talk with him yet? Uh, yeah, when he was seven, I had that talk. Oh, really? 
Uh, I've, um, uh, you know, it's, that's, uh, so, anyway. Um, oh, ooh. No, it's just, what a father, so how do you talk about that, you know, because it's stuff you don't want to know, and yet you realize you're getting old when you're driving down the street with him, and there's a woman passes the car, and both of you go. <laughs> <laughs> then you know you're in trouble. Did your dad you know? tell you? I didn't have one, so he wasn't around. Oh, that's so right, that's right. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 all I had was uh, were nuns and my grandmother. And they're not usually telling you, hey, hey, go after it, go after it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Not part of their gestalt at all. So, but you never sat down you with your son and did the slide program. Now here, when the egg, you know, when you do that thing with the. No, no, no we watched Last Tango in Paris. I think it's <laughs> oh, <I> mean, <laughs> our conversation. <laughs> So and you're I not said, a party guy? Don't do that. I mean, you grew up in New Orleans. That's like a party no, town. No, as a crazy. kid, you know, once I reached my 20s and was in New Orleans during the late 60s, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a lot of that going on. But it was still not, you know, it wasn't, uh, it was a freer time then. You know, you didn't Oh, that's you a didn't good excuse for your kid. It was a freer time well, then, also, son. Yeah, there wasn't, you know, there were things that uh, that didn't, like, kill you immediately, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, I know. And, and music when you were a kid, you got a thing on your lip. Music and, was and it, booze yeah. was what was important growing yeah. up in New Orleans. And food. No, that's what you really got. The kids your... today seem to have forgotten just how big music and booze are. No, I, think I, I think it's good for people like you to reintroduce the old values to the young people. Thank you, Jay. Well, let me. I like why you squirm. You know, usually, Mr. What Cocky, I bring this up. You're going to well, my kid is in the back. Yes, yeah, because it's around? it's sort of it's sort of like confession all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you don't know exactly it's it, what you want to actually let your son know you did in your lifetime. Right, right. You know, yeah. oh. because then you really feel like a fool when you go, you shouldn't be. But, Dad, you said it in 67 that you were naked for seven months during that time. You know? <laughs> Dad, I have a clip from The Tonight Show. Let's take a look. No. Let me tell you about the show now. The show yes. now has been moved. Now you've... Uh... Yes, we've moved time slots. Actually, the okay. same night, just a half hour later, we'll be following uh, Kelsey Grammer's show this year, Fraser. Oh, that's good. That's a good spot. Uh, boy, Because yeah. last year you were exactly. in a killer. Last year you were between, like... Roseanne and we were in the, yes, the shadow of the redwood forest yeah, uh, yeah. against uh, against uh, Roseanne, which is a, obviously a, a, a dynamic show, and so we had a tougher time finding an audience. And I think we will this year. I think so. We have a clip here. here now. What, what is this clip going to uh, say? I think this clip is uh, Mr. Hemingway has gotten a new apartment. He's been sober a year, and he's decided to ask a girl over for dinner, and he hasn't cooked anything in about 20 years. So this is his attempt at setting a romantic mood in his apartment while he cooks. Let's take a look. John Larroquette show. In past commercials, we've shown you how the Nissan Altima is smooth enough to pass the infamous Lexus glass test. We've shown you how quiet its cabin is. How it's built precisely enough to pass the ball bearing test. And how the Altima can outhandle an Acura Legend LS. What else is there? Except to once again show you our logo. And this remarkable offer of just $750 down and $239 a month. 